Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare mesh routers once again but this time I want to talk about probably two of the front runners in all of my mesh router comparisons. Today I want to talk about Google Wi-Fi versus Synology Mesh, their Synology router system. Now I've been talking about mesh a lot for a while I know and some of you might find it super dull but I also know that a number of you out there are interested in this you're reaching a point in your lives be it you know you've got a bit of cash to flash around or maybe you've moved into a new place you bought your new house and you're thinking do you know what i'm going to get me some of that mesh get some full coverage of wi-fi devices in my home and therefore when you've looked it up even though there are literally hundreds of different kinds of mesh router out there the same sort of five to ten names keep getting thrown up and one of the ones right there at the top is Google Wi-Fi. It's considered one of the most user-friendly, although it isn't one of the most affordable. We talked about affordable ones, such as the TP-Link uh, Deco, and of course the Linksys Velop. But I keep maintaining time and time again that I personally believe the Synology Mesh Router System is by far the best out there right now for a number of reasons that I will talk about throughout this video. And even now, spoiler alert, I will say that I still think it's better even than Google Wi-Fi, and I will defend my position. But, much like in previous videos, I can't take for granted that you've seen my other content. So, first and foremost, this comparison is gonna be missing a few details because they are going to be in my other videos. To so keep this video, you know, in under 15, 20 minutes max, some of the details I strongly recommend that uh, for you guys out there to check out my hardware and software reviews of both the Synology Router System and a Google Wi-Fi system because I'm going to refer to them in this comparison. I'm not going to go into any lengthy detail because I, some of you out there have already watched that content and if you watch that, they'll be far more specific in those details. Second thing, I want to talk about the importance of mesh routers. I'm going to try and knock this into a minute and a half, but why buy a mesh router? Why not just buy another router and just use a power line adapter and stick it at the other end of the house. Maybe you've got a few routers knocking around, old internet service provider routers. Why not turn one of those into a slave and have that? Why not just get a power line adapter that's Wi-Fi enabled? You're right, these are nice solutions and they will give you a large amount of coverage in another area of your home or business, but there will become a problem when you're walking through your home or office and in almost all cases, maybe you're using your phone, as you get further away from your first internet point, and move towards your second one, if it's not mesh, what will happen is your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your whatever, will stay connected to the original device, regardless of how far you're coming from it. Uh, you're coming from it, and it'll get weaker and weaker and weaker, and until you sever that connection in distance, you won't hop onto the other Wi-Fi point. The result is that you can be stood next to the other router with your phone in your hand and have terrible coverage because you're still connected to the other point. And the point of a mesh system is that all the mesh systems, uh, the mesh in the case of say Google for example, connect to one another via a wireless point. They've got their own internal antenna and node to communicate. And as you walk past one and go towards another one, it will move you onto that connection. Your device won't tell the difference. Even if they've all got the same you know, SSID and name and login and all the rest of it, the mesh system will mean that when you move towards another node point, your connection will switch to that one and you, you're, instead of your connectivity going lower and lower and lower, it will just dip slightly and then go up again as you walk between the node points. And that's the importance of mesh. But there you go, that's mesh, that's the importance of it. Let's get to the meat and grease of this, shall we? Let's, you know, first and foremost, let's talk price. These are the two closest in price that we've seen so far. Each one of these mesh points from Synology costs 120 to 130 quid. Each one of the Google points costs slightly differently. If you get um, the one on its own, it's 125. If you get two, a two pack, it's 225. Uh, and the three pack is 330 pounds. So of the two, Google Wi-Fi is certainly cheaper than the Synology. And if that's most important to you, if you're already breaking the bank, uh, going back to you first time homeowners, they're really thinking about every penny now and you still want Wi-Fi connectivity at the cheapest price, the Google Wi-Fi is most certainly the cheaper of the two. And if the budget's the most important thing to you, then maybe you need to consider that. But what I will say is the TP-Link Deco is way cheaper. So do check that out, it's 180 quid for three of those which is incredibly cheap by comparison, almost half that of Google. So, moving forward from that, 
if money's the most important, you've made your decision, bye bye. But for the rest of you, let's talk about hardware because the cost isn't enough. You wanna know about value for money. You wanna know what you're getting for your money. Well, I can tell you right now, they've both got quad-core internal CPUs. Both of them have got ARM Qualcomm CPUs inside. Uh, the Synology it has half a gig of memory, 512 megabytes, and four gig of internal storage. The Google has exactly the same. But it's in other ways that the storage has changed. If on the back of the Synology, we have two LAN ports there on the bottom. Along with that, we have a WPS button for setting things up at the click of one button, a power button, and USB for attaching external storage drives and making them network accessible. The Synology software on board, we'll talk about in more detail later on, Synology Router Management, has a file management tool on it called Synology File Station that lets all the connected devices access that USB storage, and that includes DLNA as well. The Google Wi-Fi system has two LAN ports inside, if we look there on the camera, and a USB Type-C port there for power. That's it, there isn't a WPS button. And again, it tries to be a little bit smart, but there is no WPS option to my mind on the mobile application as well. And although it's got the same CPU and hardware, there isn't a USB drive um, slot in this. And a lot of that is to do with Google really pushing their own storage, that Google drive that they want everyone to have stuff on the cloud. And it'd be very counterintuitive to them to really help you along with your private storage. Personally, as an AS user, I'm a man who's all about private storage, both locally over DAS, direct attached storage, or NAS, network attached storage. And for me, the USB port is incredibly beneficial in terms of hardware. Now, both of them have got two times two aerials that support MIMO, multi-input, multi-output. I know that isn't the exact definition, but bear with me. And of course, both of them can be extended with more nodes over time. But it's worth mentioning that the Google one is AC1200, and that's two bands, a 2.4 gigahertz band at 400 megabits per second, and a five gigahertz band, uh, I believe somewhere around 860 megabits per second, which kind of brings you up to 1200 megabits potential total coverage. Although you won't be able to utilize both on one device. Each device you connect with it will either be 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. So you'll never get that max speed. That max speed will be spread across multiple devices, speed and coverage. The Synology is 2200, or AC2200, which means 2200 megabits. Now, that device, this device here does that by having one 2.4 gigahertz channel and two 5 gigahertz channel. It also has this backhaul um, ability where you can connect multiple routers physically via a cable to get that incredible connection between them, which I know sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it's nice to have both of those options. And ultimately, you've still got a greater speed coverage uh, between all of your devices on the Synology than the Google. Because yes, the price of the Google was cheaper, but it wasn't that much cheaper. And with that much coverage, there's, it means you can cover a wider surface area with the Synology over the Google Drive. Now we've done speed tests as well, do check those out too, on all of the mesh network devices. But uh, the amount of sp sp like area coverage an individual node can cover is very, very important insofar as how many nodes you're going to need. Because the smaller the area of coverage, the more nodes you need to buy. And there's a chance that by using the Google ones, you're gonna need at least one more node to cover the surface area. That, the, that three of these can cover, you will need four of these, which means the price becomes insignificant in that world. So if you're looking at three units, then you should really think about the area of coverage in terms of hardware and price, rather than just the price. Now, moving forward from that, we can talk about software. Now, in all my other videos, when I talked about software, when I was comparing other mesh devices with the Synology system, it's worth saying that every single one of them lost. The Synology software for both mobile and desktop systems is unparalleled. Synology Router Manager 1.2 has got loads of the benefits of a network attached storage platform, such as theirs, on top of that, with an incredibly configurable and controllable operating system. You can do everything, create individual user accounts, for people in your friends, family, or office network, get, you know, actually assign faces and how much data they've used, 
all the devices that are connected, you can say that belongs to Tom, that belongs to Tom, that belongs to Phil, that belongs to Jerry, that belongs to Sarah. You can assign these devices to people and create whole identities with the, within the device. And with those, you can then say, I want that person between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to only have access to regular websites and no Facebook, Twitter, whatever on those devices. I also want to say, do you know what, at lunchtime they can, but I'm only gonna give them one hour of access to those websites. You can do that. You can go to another bunch of users and go, do you know what, I want these people to only have access to social websites or only have access to e-commerce websites. You can restrict things in a number of ways. And in a home environment, you can say that I want my children with preset configured um, setups using Google Safe Search. And again, that's Google Safe Search support on the Synology. It allows you to be able to cater your Wi-Fi network to multiple users in the way that you see fit in the most important ways to you. Now, the Google Wi-Fi software also supports this, but not that business of individual users and creating a little identity for them for all of those devices. What it gives you is the ability to hamper the, um, stop them going to certain websites and use preset parameters of different setups um, on those connected users. So it has all of those options. Google is the one that pretty much came up with all of those options and supplied them to Synology. But because of Google Wi-Fi and its software came out prior to Synology's methodology of Synology Router Manager, the result is that Synology took that and then they ran with it and they improved on it using Synology Router Manager. So you still have access to the same sort of level of configuration and control on your connected users, but it's in a far much easier way, I hope it's on screen during this, that you've got this means of saying, this person has all of these devices, they've been on the internet for this long, I want them to only have one gig of data, I only want them to be on for this length of time, and I only want them to go to these websites. And if they do break those rules, I want a notification that they've tried, or a reward system that's available on Synology Router Manager that allows you to say, right, if they haven't broken these rules for an X period of time, they can have some free internet, they can have access to the internet. If during a three hour period, your child only goes to the educational websites, and doesn't try to use their phone or laptop or whatever to break the rules, they're allowed more internet. You can set that up on Synology Router Manager and it's not something any other brand gives you. And now, Google Safe Search is something that's included with the SRM software 1.2, and of course you've got Google Safe Search with Google Wi-Fi. Other companies, I'm talking to you, Linux Linux Velop, try to charge you a subscription service for these abilities, which is super annoying. Um, but in terms of software, I'm going to come back to that sentence. The Google Wi-Fi is excellent, the software, although it is only mobile app only, a real gripe of mine which I'll stop banging on about. But again, Synology took that and then they ran with it, they improved on it, and they presented it in Synology Router Management to give you the analytics available via a mobile app and desktop interface, but at the same time improve upon it in a way that makes it far more um, user friendly to both home and business users. Google have gone a little bit too far and made it simplistic. And simplistic is one of those words that can be great or it can be a killer. Um, now, in terms of um, going forward from this, it's also worth mentioning, like a number of um, systems that, uh, again, we're talking about Linksys, TrendNet, Netgear, Orbi, all the rest of them. Loads of these companies say, oh, there's a mesh system for you, which is great. But because of the lack of LAN ports on the rear, again, much like this device, you're forced to continue to use your internet service provider router. Now, a number of you might think, oh, that's excellent, I don't have to buy a new router. But bear in mind, you will have to deactivate the Wi-Fi on the router from your internet service provider. The reason being that it can confuse your network devices and kind of interfere with your entire Wi-Fi network. Now, with Google Wi-Fi, you will have to use your old internet service provider router, your ISP router, and connect this. So you'll lose one of the LAN ports on this immediately, which you'll then have to connect to your host router, which you've already lost a connection with as well. So your host router, your internet service provider router, probably has four LAN ports on the rear. And of those four LAN ports, one port is gonna disappear for your WAN, or if you're lucky, there might be a separate WAN port. 
then there's going to be another LAN port running from there into the Wi-Fi, the Google Wi-Fi. And the Google Wi-Fi then only has one more LAN port on it. And I know you're thinking, oh, it's for Wi-Fi, who cares? Think about it. There are still, in your home or business right now, probably a few, two, four, five devices, all using LAN connections right now. Your NAS, IP cameras, your smart TV, your home console, your gaming rig. These are devices where speed is paramount and the file sizes or the file speed is incredibly important. That's why it's worth bearing that in mind when looking at Synology versus Google Wi-Fi because the Synology system, there is also a Synology large scale router too. And don't get me wrong, it's not cheap. It's I think about 220, 230 quid. It is not a low price router. But with that, you've got four LAN ports on the rear. You've got um, uh, WPS connectivity. You've got um, a separate WAN port as well. You've got USB ports and an SD card reader built into it. What I'm saying is that going with Synology as your mesh Wi-Fi system has a number of inherent advantages. That router is um, AC2600. That's 2,600 potential megabytes of coverage across 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network and it's four aerialed and those aerials all of which are their own separate point it's kind of like a mesh on its own with those four aerials attached and then you connect one mesh point over here you might need to but i doubt it because that device on its own and one of these gives as much coverage if not greater than three of the Google devices, which I know is a bold statement, and you're right, maybe in a triangular area, that will be a different story. But unless you're gonna utilize a large area of both depth and breadth, and you're not gonna see the inherent advantages compared with a scenario with these routers, which is more about an, uh, a much longer and slightly narrower coverage field. And, and again, I come back to that point that the prices between these two are close enough that it's worth bearing that in mind to spend a little bit more for that hardware coverage. So again, that is why I believe the Synology mesh system is still greater than the Google mesh system. Um, don't get me wrong, there's loads of ways in which the Google one's better. Look at the size of it for a start. It's absolutely tiny compared to that device there, but there's still no denying it for me Synology mesh is still the way forward. I'm going to be comparing a couple more of these mesh systems before I wrap things up on mesh networks in 2019. If you've got any suggestions for ones that I've missed, maybe different mesh devices that are really, really popular like the Netgear Orbi coming up next that I haven't covered yet, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.